Kristen, let me start with you. So you write that businesses need a new type of problem solving and that human sciences are part of the solution. What do you mean? Well, that's a big question, but the, the, the main point in the book is that we need uh, to understand people better. And a lot of the failures that happen in most businesses, that would be product launches or uh, missed opportunities when it comes to M&A and technology development, comes from a bad understanding of what people are and what's important to us and how we lead our lives. And uh, the story here, or the main point is that there are other ways and the human sciences have an offering in terms of how to understand people better and understand their world and culture. And um, that is integrated in the best companies in the world, but a lot of companies aren't. Um, and that's the, main, that's the main point, really. Randy, what are the organizational and business challenges that ICT is trying to solve? And how do the human sciences figure in? Well, the ICT was established as a research and development center for immersive technologies. And our vision was to be able to create experiences, and synthetic experiences, so compelling that the participants react as though they're real. But uh, what we're really trying to do, our ultimate goal really, and the goal, you know, the problems we're trying to solve is how do we raise the bar in terms of teaching and training and healing and helping people? And that's where the human scientists come in because they provide a framework uh, to help us understand how people learn and how they make decisions uh, that we can then apply uh, you know, with these technologies. Christian, uh, both you and Randy uh, apply a process called sense making. Can you describe what that is? So, so a lot of um, business decision making is t taken on a fairly linear process of running the data. Uh, sense making is more trying to make sense of a world of people. So in, in, in Randy's case, it's the world of the military or the world of particular people that are in the field and trying to understand what is going on in their life. And that process comes out of um, uh, learning theory in Randy's case, but also anthropology, sociology, and so on. Randy, can you describe the elite program and how sense making is part of that program? Most young leaders don't have experience in counseling subordinates on performance issues or personal problems. And it can be really intimidating for a young leader who is supervising people who are older than them, who, are, who uh, have more experience than they do. We teach the concepts first of counseling, and then we show demonstrations of how to do it the right way or in the wrong way, and then we give them the opportunity to practice that, uh, those new skills with a virtual human. Uh, where the sense making and the human sciences come in in this project is that it, we had to work with a really diverse team of people. In the end, what we created was a framework that uses the technology, but it's based and it's informed by the human sciences. Christian, how, can you see how you would use technologies like Elite in the companies that you work with? How would they apply it? I mean, I think there are two things. First of all, I think what Randy has here is um, a framework for how to develop technology that is more advanced than what's happening in general. Uh, because it integrates uh, uh, different sort of sciences. So a very high tech, out there, focused on technology, but also an old understanding of what learning is and what's, it, what's important in a learning situation. From a framework perspective, that's the first thing. The second thing, I think, is that they are sitting on a gold mine uh, of um, technologies that could be rolled out in commercial settings that are now developed for a military setting, but are so advanced and so well thought out that it fairly easily could be used for training in companies. This is not only a cheaper, but also much better uh, way of doing it than the way we're doing it today. Randy, what does the future hold for virtual reality education and training? So we see uh, technologies like head-mounted displays and virtual reality becoming affordable and accessible to everyone. At, at one time, you had to be a very high-end, uh, you know, a person to invest in a head-mounted display because it costs anywhere from it costs as much as fifty thousand dollars a piece. Now they're three hundred dollars. Gamers are buying them, you know, to play on their Xbox. What we have coming out of our lab here is even something less expensive than that. It's a, it's a way of converting your smartphone or your digital notepad into a 3D immersive virtual environment. And you can integrate that with a textbook uh, and, and have a, a learning tool there. 
Uh, the other big advance that we're seeing is that we're pushing the virtual human technology out so that now you can ex access a virtual human through a web browser. Uh, and that's where the future is going to be. And I have a question for both of you, which is how would you advise organizations to get ready for and engage with these technologies? So I, th I think that um, just a adapting the technology side of things would be a miserable way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you don't ha understand your learning targets, if you don't understand who you're talking to, and if you don't understand the world that you want to create based on these technologies, it will be a failure. It will just be another piece of another gadget. Mm -hmm. But combined with that, it can transform the way we learn and it can transform the way we teach things. There'll still be education happening in person, uh, but this is a way to move uh, things at v on vast distances and in great amounts uh, fairly cheaply. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a big transformative thing, but you need to understand, you need to understand what, why do you want to use it um, and what's the setting in which you're placing it. And that's a human thing. The game-changing technologies are coming. They're here. You've got to be prepared to leverage them, but you have to do it in a holistic way. And uh, again, taking into consideration the human side of how these technologies are most intelligently used and, and, and taking into consideration how people learn, how people want to use the technology, uh, not just uh, uh, throw things at them, uh, gadgets at them, as Christian said, uh, because in the end, uh, people will reject it if, if it doesn't make sense in, in terms of how they live and how they learn. Sounds like companies had better start thinking uh, hard about how they're going to engage with this. Thank you. Thank you.